Hello friends, welcome back. I hope you've been good. I hope you had a great holiday. I hope you had lots of good food. I know I did. Later this week, I am planning Sloppy Joe's on the menu. So today, let's make some delicious, rich sandwich rolls. It is currently 7 p.m. on a Monday. I have a long day, I'm kind of exhausted. So what I'm actually gonna do for this recipe is I'm going to knead everything in my bread baker. You can knead this by hand. If you watch my sandwich bread video, you can see my tutorial on how to knead bread dough. I'm going to be using the bread baker. If you have a KitchenAid, you could use that as well. Any, any option is fine as long as you have something to knead this. So this recipe is really simple. I'm going to put everything into my bread baker bowl. Make sure you read your bread maker's instructions. For mine, you start with the wet ingredients and then end with your flour and dry ingredients. Your bread machine might not be the same. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take, I have a cup of water. I'm gonna put almost all of it in there, but I'm gonna hold back a couple tablespoons. You never know if your dough is gonna be too wet or dry, depending on the climate, depending on your apartment's air conditioning. So I like to hold back a little bit and I can add some later as it's kneading if the dough is looking too dry. To that, I'm gonna add three tablespoons of sugar, three tablespoons of melted butter, one egg. There's a lot of butter and with the egg in this recipe, it comes out as a really rich, almost like borderline brioche texture. I love that. Um, it's, it's a lot different than the dry, plain white bread that you would get at the grocery store. Um, next, I'm going to add my flour. This is three and a half cups or 475 grams, if you're measuring with a scale. On top of that, on one side of the bowl, I'm gonna put my salt, that is one and a half teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of yeast, and three tablespoons of powdered non-fat milk. Um, it is completely optional. My dishwasher's gurgling. It is completely optional. You could leave it out, or if you wanted to, you could replace the one cup of water with one cup of milk. It's up to you. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna pop it in the bread machine on the knead setting. I'm not gonna use the proofing setting. I wanna show you what it looks like as it's rising, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna rise the dough on the countertop. Um, so I'm gonna put this on the knead setting and I will come back and see you when this is all mixed together. So while this is kneading, you wanna keep an eye on this, whether you're doing it by hand in the KitchenAid in a bread maker. If it's looking like it's dry, you can add a little bit of that water that you held back. If it's really sticky, uh, you can go ahead and add a little bit more flour if it's kind of puddling in the bottom. But give it some time to knead because there's still a lot of pockets of water in there. I can feel it's really wet on the inside. So let that keep going for a little bit more. So my little dough ball here is really sticky to the touch. I'm not going to add any more water. Um, I'm not going to add any more flour either. I'm just going to let this keep going. So our dough was kneading in the machine for I put it in for like one and a half cycles and now this is very springy to the touch and it's fine. The last step I just need to check with my manager to make sure that this is okay. Is this okay? It's okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to leave this on the counter to rise for one to two hours, however long it's going to take um, for this to double in size. I just have it in a greased up bowl here. I'm going to spray the top a tiny bit with some spray. We don't want it to stick to our plastic wrap. And we're going to leave this to do its thing. And once she is doubled in size, we will shape this and bake. Our dough has been rising for about, it took about an hour and a half. Um, as you can see, it is, it is extremely puffy here. Definitely got a good double in size. So the next step is going to be, oh, I'm actually gonna save this, be to deflate this, shape it into, this recipe makes eight rolls. We're gonna shape it into eight rolls. We're gonna give it another rise and then bake it. So for this step, first thing I'm gonna do is take the dough out of here, punch it down, get all of the air out. And then I want these rolls to be even, they'll, they'll bake more evenly, they'll just look better. So the most accurate way to do that is to weigh how much dough we're working with. 
and this has made 850 grams. 850 divided by... Dexter, what is 850 divided by 8? I had to check on my phone. 850 divided by 8 is 106. We're not going to be super nitpicky. We're looking for roughly 100 per roll. So this is deflated. We're just going to start cutting off 100 gram chunks and shaping them into balls. So I'll bring the camera over closer to show you what I'm doing here. Okay, we're going to cut off. We're aiming for about one eighth of this. Or like I said, it's going to be 100 grams. So just weigh little pieces. Keep adding chunks. Okay, 104. Then I'm actually gonna move this cutting board to make it easier. Then cupping my hand, I'm just gonna roll this around until it forms a ball. There we go. We have a nice little, little like little navel on the bottom. Um, but then we have one ball, which is the size that we want. We're gonna keep going. Let's get another 100 grams. Give it a little pinch and then roll. And then when you're placing these on the sheet, you want that little navel uh, to go face down because it's not pretty. Don't be worried about overhandling your dough at this stage. Um, you want to deflate it because we're going to give this another rise. We have eight more or less the same size um, balls of dough here. These look small, but we are going to let them rise. Last thing I want to do is I don't want these to rise into perfect circles, or sorry, into perfect spheres. I want them to rise in almost like a hamburger bun shape. So last thing I'm gonna do is just kind of press these a little bit. I'm gonna set these aside for a moment. Because last thing I wanna do, last thing I wanna do, spray that with a tiny bit of cooking spray. Get these a little bit more, just enough so that the plastic does not stick. Now that these are tinted, we're going to leave them for roughly another 45 minutes. They're going to puff up a lot. Um, about 30 minutes before they're ready to go in the oven, I'm going to preheat my oven to, I don't remember what the temperature is, 375. Preheat, I had to check my notes. Preheat your oven to 375, um, and I'll show you the last step before they bake. Almost done, which is good because it's 10 p.m. and I'm ready for bed. <laughs> One last step before these go into the oven, I'm going to hit them with an egg wash. Half of them I'm going to cover with sesame seeds. And the other half I thought since they're for sloppy joes that little dried onion chips might be good. So I'm gonna give all these a quick wash. You could do just an egg wash on these and do no toppings. These are also really good if you just, before putting them in the oven, brush them with melted butter. They come out really nice and rich. Or you can just leave them like this if you don't feel like covering them with anything. Or if I'm all hit with the dried onion flakes. Four, some sesame seeds. And these are ready to go in. My oven is nice and hot at 375. These are going to bake for about 15 minutes, 15 to 18 minutes. Uh, just check to make sure they're not browning too much. Once they're nice and golden brown, they're done. Here we go. After 18 minutes, we are all baked. Nice golden tops here, shiny crust. I have no idea what my neighbors upstairs are doing. It sounds like a circus. Uh, we have nice toasted bok oh, hot. Um, but anyway, I hope you try this recipe. Um, thank you for spending this time with me and happy baking. I'll see you around.